Hi, in today's video I want to show you how to use the OneWire bus in Linux. But first let's talk about what is OneWire and then I will show you how to use it. So basically OneWire is a proprietary bus from Dallas. So it's a bus system just like I2C or SPI. So you have some shared lines and you can connect your devices to it and then you can have some transfers between different devices or readout sensors for example. And OneWire is also using a master-slave hierarchy, so basically you have a master or a controller initial, initiating the transfers and you have devices or slaves reacting or responding to the transfers from the controller. And the cool thing about OneWire sensors is, or OneWire devices is, you in theory only need two pins to use them. So down here you can see the DS1820, which I will also use, which is a OneWire temperature sensor. And you can see this device has three pins. So we have two pins for power supply, ground and VDD, and we have a data pin DQ. But there is a two-wire configuration available for one wire. In this case, VDD and ground is connected to ground, here of my Raspberry Pi, and the DQ pin is connected to a GPIO pin. Here GPIO is 4 is used, which is the default pin for one wire, but you can choose any GPIO pin you want to use. And then you have a pull-up resistor from this data pin to 3.3 watts. And the cool thing is the sensor can drain its power over this connection, over the pull-up resistor. So this is pretty cool. And the sensors are quite yeah, power saving when they can be um, yeah, using this configuration. And as I said, one wire is a bus, so you can connect multiple devices to the same data pin. So here we have two temperature sensors attached to the same pin. I only have one temperature sensor available, but it's okay for demonstrating. So I'm not using this configuration. Here I'm using a free wire configuration. In this case, VDD is connected to 3.3 volts, but the data pin also has its pull up and it's shared between different devices. Okay, cool. So how can I configure my Raspberry Pi now for one wire? Basically, I need a device tree overlay for it. So let me show you this device tree overlay. So here is the overlay, it's called w one gpio overlaydts and here you can see it's compatible with, I think this, these are the Raspberry Pi chips. And here we are adding a fragment to the root path of the device tree. So here we are adding a new device we call w one which is a one-wire device. So this device is compatible with the driver with the compatible string w1 gpio and of course we need the gpio pin and here we are telling um, which gpio pin we want to use for the device and in this case it's gpio4 and when we're using gpios in a device tree we have to use a pin control to configure the pin and this is what we have here so here this field RP parasitic power tells us if we're using the two wire or the three wire configuration. So down here we can see our yeah, pin control. Basically we are, you, we are setting up pin four here. And the last section here is the overlays. So when we are using this device tree overlay, we can change some default values. So we can change the GPO pin, which should be used and we can um, use a pull up or not. So we can choose the configuration we want to, to run. Okay, so let me tell you how I wired everything up. So I'm using GPIO26 as a data pin. So we can see some variations. Okay, so what I could do now is I could copy this device tree overlay to my Raspberry Pi, save it in a DTS file and then compile it with the device tree compiler. But the cool thing is this device tree overlay is already shipped with the Raspberry Pi. So I don't have to do it. I can just directly load it. So here I am on my Raspberry Pi and let's open my second window. And in this second window, I will use dmessage minus W to see the incoming kernel logs. I'm back to this here. So now let's apply the device tree overlay, W1 GPIO and the GPIO pin 
should be 26 and pull up I will set to zero so I don't have to write this command because this is a default value but hey why not. Yeah so let's fire this command and now we can see here the driver for the one virus Dallas network protocol is loading and on our bus we found one one virus slave with this number here. So what is this number? So the first byte here, or the first byte 28 stands for a family code. So 28 means temperature sensor and this long number here is the serial number of the temperature sensor. And I think on one wire these a combination of these two numbers must be unique on the bus. And one wire is using or the sensor is using a error correction code, so it's using a CRC code here. And I think 22 is the amount of bytes you can read out the sensor. I'm not 100% sure, never mind. Okay, so how can I read out my sensor? Therefore, I will navigate to sys bus w1 for one wire. And you can see here we have a devices folder. In this devices folder, we have a folder for our one wire bus master and every uh, slave has its own folder in here. So this is the DS1820 I have on my bus. So let's take a look what we have here. Uh, device. And let's take a look what we have here. So here we have a lot of files. The important ones are W1 slave. So over this, if we cat it, we are reading all the data out of our sensor. So this, this is the data basically. So here we have a yeah, checksum, which is a lost byte here. And these, um, this here is the temperature in my room and down here it's translating the temperature. So we have 23.2 degrees here in my room. But there is also a temperature field. So if I'm getting the temperature, I'm just getting the temperature value. And when I put my finger on the sensor, you can see the temperature is increasing now. Okay, so this is how you can use it from Bash. If you want to use it in a C program, yeah, it would be just about the same. You're opening this folder, checking which devices are available, then you're going to your desired device and you would read out the temperature. For example, if you want to read out the DS 1820, or you would, or you can dump the whole W1 slave data over this file here, and then you can do with it whatever you want. Okay, so I guess that's for today. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. In case you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee and buy me a coffee.com slash for Linux. So that's for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.